So reality and, and in principle, um, entitlement are two different things. So effectively, um, a, a, um, a possible delimitation of disputes in The Hague or in other tribunals um, would produce results very different from those expected until now. The, if you like, the, result, the, the, the expectations cultivated by successive governments and um, will certainly make states not lose what they have, but lose what they think they have. I don't want to go on with, with um, uh, a lot of technicalities um, in this respect, but, um, <clears throat> but um, I, and I want to, to leave some time for discussion. So let me, let me sum up this discussion um, between um, EZ and Continental Shelf. Suggestion number one, start deconstructing, not the disputes, but the discourse and the discussion. This discussion, um, especially in Greece, which is a more, if you like, um, um, a society with, with um, a, large, a, a higher voice, a higher pitched voice, um, and, and a much more participant society, for that matter, has been one that I think does not do justice to the, to the, to the matter. Um, this, this, um, this whole discussion has gone beyond the, the academic and uh, does not certainly paint an accurate picture. This means that any government falls um, victim to this. Um, it's a situation that creates animosity. Um, any attempt to deconstruct um, hostility, I think, will be hijacked and become hostage to nationalistic discourses. Inshallah, this would not be the case with the new government, but I'm afraid it will. So point number one, start deconstructing the dispute, but also the discussion. Every widow and orphan in Greece is absolutely convinced that The Hague will be a walk in the park. It's not. In Turkey, on the other hand, perhaps it's time to start the discussion and have the, the society be slightly more participant than it has been until now. Um, point number two, start deconstructing the possibility of the International Court of Justice and any other tribunal um, because favorable outcome expectations will certainly not be um, um, honored there. Thirdly, a unilateral proclamation of an EZ, I think, would not only fail to solve bilateral disputes, but further um, complicate the issue because it would introduce yet more areas in which any court, and this is again 100%, in 100% of the cases, the court's um, um, stance, the court balances disputes. The court, rather than delimiting areas, has been apportioning areas. This is illegal in my mind, but this is the reality. So effectively, expect the International Court of Justice and any other court to act as a political organ, as it also does, except only being a legal organ, and, um, and splitting disputes. I don't mean 50-50, even 80-20, even but certainly splitting disputes. And in this respect, we should start cultivating um, perhaps a, a, a deconstructed view regarding judicial settlement. The current economic crisis should be taken, I think, as an opportunity and not only as a challenge. Stubborn positions of non-sharing in the exploration and exploitation of natural resources, so much needed during this time of crisis, just in order for the other one not to have anything, um, I think um, should become very difficult to defend anymore. It reminds me of, of families um, where um, very poor relatives inherit, and rather than um, liquidating the, the property for, for all of them to live well, uh, they don't, and, and decide to live all poor, rather than the other sibling to get anything out of it. Um, and cooperation, I think, uh, rather than conflict, would yield two additional very concrete results. One, a sharp decrease in defense expenditure, and uh, harmonization in this area, I think, potentially paves the way to more cooperation in other fields as well. Right, I know I've talked too much, so uh, the floor is yours. Please, um, yeah, if you have any, any, any questions, please shoot.
like the students at the university. I beg them to challenge me. And now, yeah. This is what I mean by participant society. Yeah. In a Greek university, I would have already in, you know, got tomatoes and things. Yeah. So please. Yeah. Yes, there we go, brave soul. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Um, I want to ask about the economic, exclusive economic zone and the continental shelf agreement between you know, Cyprus and Turkey. So the Republic of Cyprus uh, declared the exclusive economic zone and in follow to that, Turkey and North Cyprus signed the continental shelf agreement and there is, a, there is an area that converges between those two uh, agreements. So what I want to ask is, considering the bad economic situation in Cyprus, and may Turkey take the advantage of this bad economic situation and the convergence of the field, the converging field of the exclusive economic zone, and try to implement a kind of coercive diplomacy to push a kind of push or force a kind of solution in Cyprus? Thank you. Thank you. Three things. One, um, Turkey indeed signed an agreement with the TRNC. However, the, the agreement has not been ratified by the Turkish parliament yet. It's, um, it's on the way, but it's not done yet for a reason, because obviously it was a very hasty agreement to be signed for other, for other considerations. One. Second, convergent-wise, it could not do anything because, as I, as I, I, as I mentioned, um, in the case of exclusive economic zones, you need to have either agreement or delimitation through adjudication. There's no third way. That's it. So effectively, Turkey could either possibly um, proceed with a, an agreement with the Republic of Cyprus, no, um, or agree together to, to, um, to refer the dispute to an international adjudicative organ. Bear in mind that, that the sometimes pronounced argument about non-recognition does not have a legal footing here. On a number of occasions I hear that the fact that, that um, the two countries do not recognize each other would not allow them to, to, um, uh, to proceed with um, um, recourse to international adjudicative mechanism. This is not correct. For example, see what happened before the European Court of Human Rights. The two countries have been uh, parties before the court in the Loisidu case and, and later in, in all the other cases without any need for recognition. The, the need is for the two countries to, to, um, to agree to refer the dispute commonly to the, to, the, to, the, to the organ. So that's not a problem. Actually, the other way around, it would, it would perhaps offer an opportunity for the two states to cooperate, to start cooperating in some areas and Yavash Yavash, inshallah, introduced Yani discussion in other areas as well. Okay? Hopefully. That's the thing. Yeah. Siga, <laughs> siga. Um, now, Turkey has, has been plundering between two positions. One, you cannot talk with um, the, the Republic of Cyprus, with its um, um, represent, uh, representation of half of the island and all that, um, Turkey says is not allowed to proceed with any delimitation agreements with any other states because of the absence of the Turkish Cypriots in this discussion. Effectively, the, the government is not legitimized to do so, um, Turkey says, because it does not represent um, the whole thing. Secondly, even if this fails as an argument, then we go up to position number two, which says, no, Turkey is representing these people because of the agreements um, of the 1960, the establishment of the state, and Turkey being a guarantor um, power. And also in international judicative organs, Turkey has been dragged if an issue pertains to the TRNC. For instance, now there is a case pending before the European Court of Human Rights. Um, it's, uh, it's called Hussein Çavuşoğlu versus Turkey regarding um, the repelling of um, the sodomy laws of the British, the, um, the, the laws banning homosexuality in the north of the island. Now, you see it's Savusharu, who is a Turkish Cypriot, versus Turkey, because Turkey has effective control of the north of the island. Okay? So you see, the fact that, that the administration is not recognized internationally is also no um, impediment 
to a solution being found because there is somebody representing it internationally and this is the, the, the state of Turkey. But Turkey reverses this to say if we are representing the North then we need to be part of the delimitation agreement. So you choose either of the two. Um, Rolandis, who was um, an ex-foreign minister in, 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 um, in the Republic of Cyprus, uh, published, I think, four years ago and again last year an article um, with a concrete suggestion to say why don't the, um, the, the, the Republic of Cyprus open an account in Switzerland um, and deposit the percentage of any potential income would become extremely, extremely rich extremely quickly, um, as in within the year or so. And this is certainly not the case. Absolutely not the case. So effectively, we, we poison the future, we elect to poison the future further because of a possibility back then. And it's not as simple because it needs a lot of money. Noble Energy is a technical company. It's, it doesn't have any finances. It went to the open market internationally to find funds. And funds are not coming because obviously of the economic crisis, because it needs something like $60 billion eventually um, for the whole thing. And nobody invests in an area where you don't know what happens in Lebanon, in Israel, in, in Cyprus, um, even before the Arab Spring, let alone now. So who would invest this kind of money? And plus, from the political point of view, you know, Turkey was amenable to, to finding a solution in Cyprus last year, before the Arab Spring. Now, after the Arab Spring, Turkey has lost any incentive to do so because it wants to keep the footing in the area. So it's, it's too complicated, you know, to be simplistic or technical or even legal. I mean, it's a, it's a host of, of, of issues um, together. Thank you. Um, Harry, two questions for you. One is a rather broader one. Uh, for a while, um, also Turkish foreign ministry officials emphasized significantly that there was a certain decoupling between the Cyprus issue and uh, the Aegean problems, but there had always also been a, kind of an undercurrent link between the two. So um, what is your assessment of that? Would it really be possible, I mean, to resolve the bilateral problems in the Aegean without a solution to the Cyprus issue? And the second question is a bit more specific uh, about uh, the airspace disputes. Um, our work on Turkish-Greek relations have also indicated that, um, that there's an enormous peace dividend to be achieved in terms of the reduction of dogfights in the Aegean if there is a breakthrough with um, the airspace disputes. Of course, again, it's not isolated from the rest. But Right. Um, two things then. Um, decoupling. Um, yes, we all wished for it. Um, actually, just before the referendum in Cyprus, um, the Greek government, in the last moment, perhaps too little, too late, but but said a, a very lukewarm yes to the possibility of um, uh, reunification of the island. So effectively, it was the first time that itself it um, it uh, it started decoupling um, the two. Um, I'm really not sure where things go with uh, where things will go with um, the new um, uh, political environment in Greece. My my fear, and I would love to be to be proven wrong. Um, is that um, um, things are not going to go very well now for a number of reasons having to do with conservative convictions of this government because of its legacy um, throughout the years and, and, and the legacy of certain people within um, the political party um, and certainly the fact that it's easy to, to apportion blame to an external factor as always the case has been when you have a lot on your domestic plate to do. Um, I would very much like to, to see a decoupling um, of, of, um, of the two for a number of reasons um, having to do with the, the concrete steps, if you like, the key of rapprochement between the two countries since 1999 although the Cyprus issue was not going very well. So effectively, it's the first time that for the last 10 or 12 years, um, we had an acquis of rapprochement between um, Turkey and Greece, although there were no concrete steps for the unification or otherwise solution of um, the Cyprus issue. Um, now, if we didn't achieve it with governments that problematic in other, one, other uh, um, ways as they might have been, were at least very much pro rapprochement and pro decoupling. I'm not sure if this would be the case um, now. 